Mr. President, as many of my colleagues have already noted, the jobs numbers today were very bleak and should cause great concern for all of us as we look at steps that we can take to get this economy growing again. But that's why the CBO report that came out yesterday also is so troubling, because it indicated that the Democrat uh, proposal, the stimulus plan before us, would create as few as 1.3 million jobs, as many as 3.9 million, to be fair, but as few as 1.3 million jobs. Well, a trillion dollars, Mr. President, is a terrible price to pay for a bill that may create as few as 1.3 million jobs over, I might add, a two-year period. And it also went on to say, the CBO report did, that it would reduce the GDP growth in the out year. So not only does it create potentially a very small amount of jobs, 1.3 million over a two-year period, but it also uh, diminishes the amount of GDP growth that we would experience in later years. Now, if it in fact does create only 1.3 million jobs, if this trillion dollar plan, again, all based on borrowing from future generations, does create as few as 1.3 million jobs, if you do the arithmetic on that, you spend a trillion dollars and you only create a little over a million jobs, uh, that's, you know, $800,000 per job. Uh, try and think about how you can convince your constituents back in your home states about the need to spend $800,000 to create a single job. I mentioned this yesterday, but I'll repeat it again, but the people in my state of South Dakota, the average annual salary is about $30,000 per year. And so to think about spending $800,000 to create a job is something that's going to be very hard to accept, I think, for a lot of people around this country, which is why, Mr. President, I believe that so many people around the country are rallying and saying this is the wrong direction in which to head. I happen to agree with that assessment, and I think there are some things that could be done that would make this process uh, more fair in terms of including ideas that, uh, that Republicans have to put forward, but more importantly, get a product that is more effective, more effective at creating jobs at a lower cost. Now, many of us have tried to improve this bill. Uh, I supported a McCain amendment yesterday, a comprehensive approach that is much better in terms of addressing and much much better, much better focused in terms of job creation at about half the cost of the underlying bill, the majority bill that we're debating today. So we've tried to make this thing more focused and more fiscally responsible. And I think that putting the focus and the emphasis on job creation is the right place to be. But many of the efforts that we've made to that end have failed. We've also offered amendments to cut much of the wasteful spending out of this bill, most of which have been defeated. Mr. President, what I've sort of concluded is that as, as much as we tried to make this a better bill by cutting wasteful spending, by making the focus on job creation, by trying to reduce taxes on small businesses and middle income taxpayers, which would get more money back into the economy and emphasize less spending on government programs in Washington, D.C., where the bulk of this is, uh, is committed, that's a much better approach. And m many of our amendments have been focused in that direction, but as I said, uh, none have been accepted. I have one more amendment that I have filed, uh, Mr. President, that I hope to have an opportunity to call up, and it's sort of a last-ditch effort to, to bring some reason to this whole debate. But what it essentially would do is take the total cost of the Democrat bill, about $900 billion without interest, $900 billion, when you add in the interest costs, as I said before, you get up to about $1.2 trillion or north of that, all of which is borrowed money, borrowed from future generations. But take that total amount, $900 billion, and divide it by every tax filer in this country, anybody who files an income tax return in this country, and basically write them a check. Now, it's probably surprising to, uh, to uh, most of us here what you could do with that. But for an average individual filing a tax return in this country, you could write them a check for $5,143. For a couple filing jointly, $10,286. Now, to be fair, I also wrote the amendment so that Anybody making more than $250,000 a year would not be eligible. Try to make this so that, uh, you know, you can't argue that this is a tax cut for the rich. So anybody who makes uh, more than $250,000 would not be eligible. All filers who have under $250,000 in taxable income would be eligible under this. You can actually write a check to an individual filing for $5,143 and to a couple filing jointly a check for $10,286. That's a lot of money. 
and most people's, I think, uh, family incomes. And it makes a lot more sense in my judgment, Mr. President, than spending $900 billion on programs that many of us know won't work, creating new bureaucracies in Washington, D.C., at a very high cost per job. As I said, if the CBO numbers are right on the low end, 1.3 million new jobs, and you divide that, do the arithmetic on that, you are talking, you know, anywhere around the numbers, $800,000 per job. What kind of sense does that make? Uh, it's, it's pretty clear, in my opinion, and I think the opinions of most of the American people, that this, uh, this is very misdirected in terms of uh, what it's, uh, the mission of this whole, I, intention is great, but uh, the substance of this particular piece of legislation is very, very flawed, uh, Mr. President. And I would add one last thing, and that is that the, you talked about economic models and analysis and methodology, but uh, the President's own chief economic advisor uh, put together a, a methodology about a year ago, a little over a year ago, that said that for every dollar of tax cuts, you get to a multiplier of 2.2 increase in GDP. So if you cut taxes by a dollar, uh, GDP increases by 2.2 times. So it seems to me at least that uh, if you take that methodology, and it seems that I think intuitive to most Americans that when you reduce their taxes, middle income family taxes, and taxes on small businesses, which create the jobs in this country, that you get a much better outcome in terms of GDP growth and job creation than sending a bunch of money into government programs here in Washington, D.C., many of which, I might add, are new programs that won't get up and started for a very long time. There'll be a tail on them, and as a consequence, you will not see the result in a, in a short period of time that we're trying to target here, a temporary approach to this, that actually creates jobs and helps pull us out of the economic uh, crisis that we're in. So that's an amendment I have filed, Mr. President. Uh, it takes that total amount, $900 billion, breaks it down on a per filer basis. And if you're an individual filing, uh, you can get a check for $5,143. And if you're a uh, couple filing jointly, you can get a check for $10,286. But I, I would like to see us uh, approach this in a, in a different way. Uh, a lot of amendments, as I said, have been offered. Uh, some good alternatives. The, uh, the McCain alternative that we voted on yesterday uh, makes a lot of sense to me. It does it about half the cost, a lot more effective at creating jobs. That was defeated, as have been all the other amendments that we have offered to make this thing more fiscally responsible, more focused, and more targeted on job creation. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. President, I would yield uh, the floor.